Have you ever wondered what sets successful businesses apart from the rest? Well, in this video, I'll break down the secrets and dive into how and why understanding your audience will help you achieve your goals. This video is a third of a series of free learning courses where I'm going to help you become a better digital marketer by sharing some of the most important things you need to know about digital marketing right now. So subscribe, grab your notebook, and let's get at it. Today, we're going to cover three chapters, one looking at what target market definition is, chapter two, understanding the fundamentals and approaches to segmentation, and chapter three, how to effectively apply segmentation to your business. Chapter one, understanding the essence of target market. Now, what is a target market? A target market is a specific group of potential customers that a business aims to reach with its products or services. This group shares some common characteristics, needs, and preferences that make them more likely to be interested in what your business offers. So identifying and defining your target market is the foundational step in crafting an effective marketing strategy. But why is it crucial for marketing success? Well, we'll cover that in four parts. Number one is resource efficiency. Without a defined target market, your marketing efforts may be scattered and resources may be wasted on reaching people who have little or no interest in your offerings. And this can really lead to inefficiencies in budget as well as time spent. Number two is message relevance. So by knowing your target audience or target market, you can tailor your marketing messages to speak directly to their needs and or desires. And this relevance makes your marketing material more compelling and persuasive. Number three, it's about competitive advantage. Now, targeting a specific market segment allows you to differentiate yourself from your competitors who may have a broader, less focused approach. And this differentiation can help you stand out in a crowded marketplace. This is also why competitive analysis is very important in developing your business and marketing strategy. Number four is it really helps inform your product or service development. Knowing your target market's preferences and pain points really helps you craft and develop products or services that meet their needs and help resolve their pain points. So you can create products or services that directly address these needs which in turn increases the likelihood of success and capturing market share from your competitors. So let's dive into what the role is in tailoring your marketing efforts. Now, identifying your target market is very much like fitting a key into a lock. It allows you to customize your marketing efforts to really unlock the path to meeting your clients or customers needs. So here's how it plays a crucial role in tailoring those efforts. We'll cover it in three parts. Number one is, as I mentioned, message customization. Now, your messaging can be really fine-tuned to resonate with the specific language, values, and interests of your target market. And this personalization makes your brand more relatable. Think about how you feel as a consumer when you're receiving brand messages that are very generic versus those that are a little more personalized. Maybe they understand you and the pain points you're experiencing and how this product or service can help resolve those pain points. Number two, and where it really helps tailor your marketing efforts is in content creation. Now, when you have a very specific and defined target audience, content marketing becomes way more effective because now you create content that addresses the specific challenges or aspirations of your target market. So you can craft blog posts, videos, or social media campaigns that really adds that value. Number three is channel selection. Now, what I mean by this is that different segments of your target market may prefer different communication channels. So they may choose to be more on email versus social media versus traditional advertising. But you can even go a step further. It could even be which social media channels is your target market most likely to be present and engaged in. So does it make sense to be on TikTok versus LinkedIn or versus email versus traditional marketing? These are all the different ways that it can really help tailor your marketing efforts and which channels you choose to speak to your intended target audience. Let's zoom out a little bit here and look at, well, what is the benefit to businesses? We understand it from a marketing perspective. From a business perspective, there are really two key areas where defining your target audience becomes really important. Now, it's not just limited to these two, but these are the two that I'd like to highlight here with you. One being enhancing return on investment. Now, 
ROI is a critical metric in marketing and in business because it quantifies the return you receive on the resources you invested in your marketing efforts and your business. So understanding your target market is directly related and tied to enhancing your ROI. So you could look at this in two ways. You can look at it in terms of the efficient resource allocation. As we mentioned before, by focusing your resources on reaching the right people, you reduce wastage and you really increase the efficiency of your marketing spend. This means a higher ROI for every marketing dollar. And that's how you want to be thinking about your marketing is how much value are you deriving out of that spend? Next would be conversion optimization. Now, this is where you can really start tailing your marketing efforts to actually turn those likes into sales. So when you're starting to target to your market's needs and preferences, you're more likely to convert those leads into customers. This increased conversion rate directly impacts your ROI. So think of it this way. If you're speaking and just trying to get likes or those vanity metrics, that's all great. But how are those likes and comments translating into actual sales? You want to be sure that you're adding value to your clients, not just making them laugh or making them enjoy your content. That's important from a brand perspective. But when you're actually trying to drive ROI, you want to get a little bit deeper and try to draw them further down the optimization funnel to actually purchase from you. Another key element here in terms of the benefit to business is it really fosters customer loyalty. Now, customer loyalty is extremely valuable in marketing because loyal customers not only make repeat purchases, but they become advocates for your brand or your business. So by identifying your target market, you're really contributing to customer loyalty because you're going to be speaking to those people and those people are going to be speaking on your behalf, telling their family or friends about your product or services when they're in a time of need or they're having pain points. So you do want to try to build that army of advocates by speaking to a very specific target audience. So you want to think about this in two ways in terms of how do you do this? Well, you want to really think about how do you personalize experiences? So you got to keep in mind that when your target market feels that your brand or business understands their specific needs, they're more likely to stay loyal. You can create personalized experience and offers that really resonate with them. So think about timing of the year or other offers, or even if it's offering education at the right time for a specific group that is probably going through some pain points of their own. The goal here is to really build long-term relationships and understanding your target market helps you build your long-term relationships because you're able to really start to map out a customer journey, a life cycle in terms of the different points of a customer's life where your business or service can be needed or the value can be derived to help them. So with this, you can really start to anticipate changing needs, evolving your products or services, and just continuing to build that loyalty. Because building long-term relationships in business, much like in life, isn't a set it and forget it. Just like you have a close friend, you're going to give them a call, you're going to stay in contact with them, check in on them, understand what their needs are, and adapt in terms of how the life journey progresses. So understanding the essence of a target market is not just a fundamental aspect of marketing. It's really the entire journey and fundamental to your business success. By defining your target market, you really unlock the power to optimize your resources by delivering highly relevant messages, maintaining a competitive edge, and really developing products or services that truly resonate and add value to your audience and your and your customers. So it's not just about identifying who may buy from you. That's important, but it's about forging meaningful connections with those who are more likely to become your loyal customers. So as we journey through this course and we wrap up chapter one, I want you to keep in mind who your target market is. It's not static. It can evolve and change. So keep that in mind as we shift into chapter two. Now, chapter two is looking at the fundamentals of audience segmentation and some of the approaches. So we'll unpack a little bit here and we'll start with, well, what is audience segmentation? Well, audience segmentation is really a cornerstone of modern marketing. It's a strategic process that involves dividing a broad audience into distinct, more homogenous groups based on shared characteristics or behaviors. 
the ultimate goal of audience segmentation is to gain a deeper understanding of your customers and enabling you to tailor your marketing efforts more precisely to their unique needs, preferences, or behaviors. So by creating these segmented groups, businesses can develop more highly targeted and effective marketing campaigns, ultimately enhancing customer satisfaction, brand loyalty, and overall business success, which we touched on in chapter one. So in essence, the audience segmentation empowers the business to speak directly to the right people with the right message at the right time. Keep in mind, you've got one broader target audience, you're segmenting that broader target audience more granularly so that you can target specific messages. So how do you approach audience segmentation? And there's a number of ways to do that in varying degrees. In this chapter, we'll cover geographic, demographic, psychographic, and behavioral segmentation. To start with geographic segmentation, geographic segmentation is a method of dividing a target market based on geographical factors. So it involves understanding where your customers are physically located and tailoring your marketing strategies to suit these specific geographic regions. So factors within geographic segmentation may include location, which is really the primary aspect and involves dividing your market based on regions, countries, states, provinces, cities, or even neighborhoods, if that makes sense for your business. The geographic location really can significantly impact consumer behavior and preferences. For example, be it weather conditions, local traditions, cultural influences. All of these can vary by location and depending if it makes sense for your business are something to take into consideration. Next is climate. Now, again, keep in mind all of these examples do have to depend on your business and product or service, but climate plays a significant role in the geographic segmentation and namely around products or services that are useful in hot or tropical climates. You know, it may not be as relevant in colder climates. So you want to understand where you're trying to sell and who you're trying to sell and in what climate they are in. Another factor is urban versus rural. Now, when you look at urban and rural areas, they have distinct characteristics. Urban dwellers might have different needs and preferences compared to those in rural settings, such as access to resources, transportation, and lifestyle factors. These all vary greatly. So depending on where your customers or that audience segment is located, you may want to speak to them or provide offers in a different way. Lastly, here to round out geographic segmentation is population density. Now, Targeting densely populated areas may require different marketing tactics. So you have to think that in crowded areas, convenience and quick service may be more valued. While in less populated areas, that personalization and that community connection may matter more. So when you're looking at population density, you do want to look at it with that sort of a lens. Now, geographic segmentation, it really recognizes that consumers are not homogenous. They're shaped by their environments. And really by understanding this and leveraging this, businesses can refine their marketing strategies to offer more relevant products or services and ultimately build stronger connections with their target audience. And this tailored approach really enhances that customer satisfaction, that loyalty, and that business success we were speaking about. The second section here we're going to jump into in chapter two is around demographic segmentation. Now, demographic segmentation involves categorizing your target market based on quantifiable attributes of individuals or households. Now, these attributes help in understanding consumer behavior and tailoring market efforts. And some of those factors include age, for example, looking at teenagers versus young adults, middle-aged or seniors, because they all have distinct preferences, different needs and different purchasing behavior. So for example, marketing cosmetics to teenagers may focus more on trends and self-expression, while marketing to seniors may emphasize more on anti-aging. We then look at gender. Now, gender-based segmentation recognizes that there's a difference in preferences and needs between the various genders. So it's really crucial for products and services to be very focused on gender specific attributes and how they speak to different genders about their product or service. Next is around income. Now, 
This could be a sensitive topic, but income level does influence purchasing power in the, and the different types of products or services that individuals can afford. So think of it in the way of looking at if your product or service is a necessity or a luxury, and then really home in on how you can speak to your desired audience segment. Another one is education. Now, education levels, you have to realize, impact how consumers make decisions. Now, we're going to make some generalizations here, but you may look at it in the sense of highly educated consumers may seek more detailed information or value innovation, while those with lower education levels may prioritize simplicity or cost effectiveness. Now, I'm not saying this is absolute. What I'm saying is you do want to look at the different type of segmentation in understanding how to speak and offer the right value adds in your product or service, depending on these factors. Another factor is family status. Now, you have to look at it whether an individual is single, married, married with no kids, or married with kids, all significantly affects their buying decisions. So you have to understand that a family status influences what they're looking for in terms of value out of a product or service. And that's something that's really important when you're marketing yourself and messaging to your different audience segments. Next is occupation. Now, the type of occupation or job that an audience segment may hold can and may impact their lifestyle or preferences. So for instance, marketing workwear would be significantly different to someone who has an occupation in construction versus someone who is in a corporate job. Very different very different attire required. So it's a bit of a simplistic example, but that is an example of how you want to look at how you speak to your different audience segments based on their occupation. Now, lastly, we're going to touch on ethnicity. And I know this can be another sensitive topic, but we do have to realize that cultural backgrounds, traditions do influence the values and the preferences of an audience segment. So you also don't want to be tone deaf when you're speaking to different audience segments and really try to understand the differences because that's really essential in cultural sensitive marketing. And it's an area you want to tread lightly in and really do your homework on. So overall, understanding demographic segmentation is essential because it empowers businesses to target their audience more effectively. Again, it's about creating that relevant marketing message, optimizing your resources, and really maintaining and promoting a cultural sensitive product or service. And it's foundational to the success of marketing and business. Next, we'll dive into psychographic segmentation. Now, psychographic segmentation digs deeper into the psychology and emotional aspect of your target audience. Now, it can include various factors, one being lifestyle. Now, Lifestyle refers to the way individuals live their lives, including their daily routines, interests, and activities. So it's about grouping customers based on these lifestyles and values. So as an example, consider two individuals in the same age group and income bracket. One leads an active lifestyle, enjoying outdoor adventures and fitness activities, while the other prefers a more relaxed, indoor-oriented lifestyle, spending time reading, gardening, cooking. These distinct lifestyles would really influence their product preferences and purchasing behaviors. Next would be values. Now, imagine a segment of consumers who prioritize sustainability and eco-friendliness. They actively seek products with minimal environmental impact, support brands that align with their values. Understanding this is crucial for business and crucial in how you may or may not aim to attract the environmentally conscious audience. So this means really identifying segments with shared values that make sense for your product. Next is interests. Now, interests relate to the hobbies, passions, and activities that people engage in for enjoyment. This means segmenting based on these factors. But as an example, a segment of consumers may have a strong interest in, for example, gourmet cooking or fine dining. They enjoy experimenting with new recipes, collecting unique kitchen gadgets, and, and just dining at upscale restaurants. So for businesses in the food industry, for example, targeting this interest-driven group with culinary products and experiences would be highly effective versus someone that really is just looking for convenience and cost effectiveness. 
You could probably tell here that a lot of these interconnect and overlap, and that's why you can't look at any one of these in isolation. It's also important to understand which of the factors and approaches best fit your business. Number four looks at personality traits. Now, personality traits encompass a person's characteristics, such as introversion, extroversion, adventurous, cautious, and many, many more. So this could mean categorizing by personality characteristics that make sense for your business. As an example, consider a segment characterized by adventurous. These individuals seek you know, novelty, excitement, whether it's extreme sports or exotic travel destinations. So businesses targeting this audience would benefit by offering adventurous experiences or products that really tailor their marketing to appeal to this group through excitement and thrill. Number five is looking at opinions and attitudes. Now, opinions and attitudes reflect how individuals perceive and feel about various topics, including your own industry or product or service category. This means analyzing customers' opinions and attitudes towards various topics. And an example would be Suppose a, a segment of, cons of consumers or customers holds strong opinions about sustainable fashion. So businesses can resonate with this group by really showcasing the sustainability side of their business. Now, understanding psychographics segmentation as a whole, it's essential. It's essential for the similar reasons as the previous, because it just empowers business owners to connect with their audience at a deeper level. You're able to create, this is where you're able to really create more personalized and effective marketing strategies that start to build in that emotional connection that your brand understands them and understands their pain points. It goes and elevates a business from merely selling products to building the meaningful relationship and long lasting loyalty with their customers. And lastly, here we've got behavioral segmentation. Now with behavioral segmentation, it focuses on understanding and categorizing customers based on their actions and behaviors. By analyzing how customers interact with a product or services, businesses can really tailor their marketing strategies effectively. And here are the key elements of behavioral segmentation. Number one is purchase behavior. Now purchase behavior categorizes customers based on their buying habits and tendencies. It's about understanding how frequently customers make a purchase, the types of products they buy, and their spending patterns. This would mean grouping customers based on their purchasing habits, such as frequent shoppers, occasional buyers, and brand loyalists. Next is usage rate. Now, usage rate segmentation classifies customers according to how often they use a product or service. It provides insights into the level of engagement and reliance on a particular offering. This would mean segmenting by how often customers would purchase, looking at heavy users, moderate users, or occasional users. An example of this would be a fitness app. Some users may log in daily to log a workout, while others are more sporadic. So understanding these usage rates really helps tailor your notifications, your content, and your incentives to keep those users engaged. Next is looking at brand loyalty segmentation. And this differentiates customers based on their allegiance to a particular brand or company. It really reveals whether customers are truly advocates who consistently choose one brand or another, or if they're just switchers who switch between brands or just simply indifferent. So this would mean categorizing the customer based on loyalty to your brand and looking at who are the brand advocates, switchers, or indifferent customers, and how do you speak to the different groups? For example, some customers have unwavering support for a particular athletic shoe brand and buy only that brand's products, while others are more open to trying different brands. So businesses can use this information to reward loyal customers and then implement strategies to retain switchers. You can see here how your messaging would be very different to these different types of segments based on brand loyalty. Lastly, and to round up chapter two here, is occasion. Now, occasion-based segmentation identifies customer segments based on specific occasions or events when they make certain purchases. It recognizes that buying behavior can change depending on the context or time of year. So this would mean identifying segments based on certain holidays or events. So think, you know, um, 
Christmas or back to school or summer and March break. These are all key events in the year or holidays where shoppers tend to make more purchases than they usually do of a particular type. So businesses can really start to create targeted marketing campaigns or promotions around these occasions to create and maximize sales opportunities. Not only that, but also to develop content if you're offering a service to keep people top of mind. Heading into chapter three now, we're going to look at, well, how do you apply segmentation effectively? Now, market segmentation or audience segmentation is a dynamic process. It demands careful planning, execution, and really continuous refinement to be truly effective. Now, here's a detailed guide on how to apply segmentation effectively, along with some best practices. We'll cover it in four parts. Number one is research. Now, effective segmentation begins with thorough research. And I did have a a video in course number two where I take a deep dive into market research. I do suggest you take a look at that video. I'll leave a link in the description. But research involves collecting relevant data about your target market through various methods. So think surveys, interviews, data analysis. And research really is the foundation from which you build your segmentation strategy upon. Some best practices here are to collect comprehensive data. This ensures that your research covers a wide range of variables, including demographics, psychographics, and behavioral. This comprehensive approach will give you a holistic view of your audience. Another best practice is use both quantitative and qualitative methods. You want to combine quantitative data, numerical data like age and income, with qualitative data, such as insights from interviews or open-ended survey questions. This will allow you to gain a deeper understanding of your audience's motivations and preferences. Another best practice here is leveraging analytics tools. Now, our human brains are only capable of retaining and analyzing so much. So you want to utilize analytics tools to really help track customer behavior and really amalgamate traffic and data and metrics from across your website, social media, and other platforms, because this data can really help inform and build valuable insights that you can then act upon. In terms of how, what this enables businesses to do, it really helps you make those informed decisions. So through research, it provides a solid foundation for decision-making because by collecting data on your target market, you gain the insights into your customer preferences, pain points, and behaviors. And this information helps inform your product or service development, not only that, but your pricing strategy and marketing efforts. It also really helps you identify market opportunities. You have to realize we live in an evolving world and evolving environment. So by continually doing your research, you're able to uncover untapped market segments or niches that may not have initially appeared in your initial research. So by continuing to do your research over time and anticipating needs, you'll be able to uncover trends and gain that competitive advantage. Number two is segment selection. Now, not all segment criteria are equally applicable to your business. I kind of alluded to that earlier on. You're going to have to align your the right criteria with your specific goals. So segment selection involves carefully choosing the criteria that are most relevant to you and your business. Some best practices here are just really ensuring that your business goals fit the new expanded new markets or geographical segmentation? Does it make sense for you to be looking at geographic segmentation versus looking at income or some other criteria? You also want to look at and consider market size. You want to assess the size of each segment to determine if it's worth targeting, because if it's not, then you know not to waste your time, your resources, your money. Smaller niches, though, may be highly profitable, but they require that specialized marketing effort. You just have to determine if the return on investment makes sense for you. You also want to avoid, like everything, is over-segmentation. Now, segmentation is essential, and it's been the theme of the entire video, but you want to avoid over-complicating your strategy with too many segments, because over-segmentation can lead to inefficient marketing efforts. So you do want to ensure that you zoom in, but not too much. You want to zoom out and not too far. You want to find that right spot and that sweet spot because that will really enable your business to efficiently allocate your resources. Not only that, but also customize 
the different segments to enable you to tailor your marketing messages and offers to suit each unique characteristic of your audience. And on that theme around tailored marketing, that brings us to how crafting marketing campaigns and messages and content really help you resonate with your intended segment. Now, this tailored approach really ensures your marketing efforts speak directly to your audience. And that's what you want to do. You don't want to do blanket messaging. You want to speak to your specific segments based on where they are in their life cycle. So some best practices here are creating customized content. So when you develop content that addresses the specific pain points and interests of each segment, this might involve creating different ad creatives or email campaigns or even landing pages for each group. This way, when you're putting out blog posts or social media posts, you're driving and speaking to a specific audience segment and leading them to a journey through landing pages that then help convert them to customers. This also leads us to the second best practice, which is personalized communication. Now, you want to use customer data effectively to really personalize your communications. You want to, if you can, address customers by name in an email, recommend products or services based on their past behavior. This really helps you tailor and customize and personalize that experience. The other best practice here, and this is an important one to note, is maintaining brand consistency. Because while tailoring is crucial, ensuring that your brand's core messaging and value remain consistent across all segments is very important. Consistency builds trust and it builds that recognition. And to round out chapter three here, we're going to look at testing and refinement. What works today may not work tomorrow. So continuous monitoring and refinement really is essential. So you want to regularly assess the performance of your segmentation strategy and adapt circumstances and fine tune your approach. There are three best practices I want to highlight here, and that is setting clear metrics. You want to define key performance indicators for each segment. This might include conversion rates, click-through rates, customer retention, and you want to regular track and analyze these metrics. So this way you can tweak and adjust as needed. Conducting A-B testing really helps you compare different marketing approaches within each segment. This helps identify what strategies are more effective. And lastly is customer feedback. Now, what this enables a business to do is optimize by continually testing and refining. They're able to adjust different marketing strategies and ultimately adapt to the, the dynamic marketing changes over time. Testing and refinement enables business owners to adapt to evolving customer preferences and keep up with a competitive landscape. In summary, each aspect of effective segmentation empowers business owners in different ways. One being research, which provides insights and identifies opportunities. The other is segment selection, which ensures efficient resource allocation and customization. Next is tailored marketing, which enhances relevance and conversion rates. And lastly, testing and refinement, which is optimizing strategies to facilitate adaptation. Now, altogether, these elements form a dynamic process that allows you, the business owner, to make data-driven decisions, connect with your audience on a deeper level, and stay responsive to changing market conditions. By understanding your target market through segmentation, you can position yourself for sustained growth and success in your respective industry. And that's it for course number three. And as we close things off, if you do want more details on target market or audience segmentation, you can check out some of my blog posts or for more discussion on the topic, you can also check out my podcast. I'll leave all the links in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in. I do hope you learned something here and you can apply it to your own business. If you did find the information valuable, please let me know in the comments. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. It helps others find these videos and also helps me create the right videos for you.